As you can tell, we're back to green and ordinary time as we greet each other in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Let's pause for a moment to place ourselves quietly and consciously in the presence of our loving God and ask to experience God's pardon and God's peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. This we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He governs the people with equity. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. 
there are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit produce all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you and with your spirit. A reading from the good news of Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, How does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. They filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is a phenomenal story, chock full of all kind of interesting but subtle things that when connected speak loudly in today's gospel. First, Jesus and his mom were invited to a wedding, and they attend. Jesus is like us. He celebrates important events. Our Savior goes to a wedding. Now let's not miss the significance of John including this story in his gospel, which serves to announce the initiation of the ministry of Jesus. Deep in Jewish tradition is the symbol of God's love for people likened to a wedding. Father Dennis Ham, a Jesuit scripture scholar, notes that God is to Israel as a husband is to a wife. The prophetic tradition uses the imagery of marriage to describe God's love. Jesus used the occasion of marriage for his teaching and stories. Absent from today's reading is the opening line of the story. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee. On the third day. Does that ring a bell? In the book of Exodus, be ready for the third day, for on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And lest we forget, and on the third day, he rose again from the dead. What is this story saying about the presence of God, which is pointed out to us on this, the third day? God makes an appearance in Cana. Next, the couple runs out of wine on their wedding day. This does not mean the bar ran dry. Wine was a staple in the ancient Near East. It's like saying you ran out of food. Imagine what the guests would say as they left the feast. Can you believe they ran out of food? 
one of the most beautiful and holy celebrations is teetering on the cusp of becoming an embarrassment to this couple. Jesus sees six stone water jars whose purpose is for cleaning. Stone water jars are expensive, not baked from clay, but sculpted and pure and non-porous. Father Ham observes that there are six jars, not seven. Seven is the number of completion, like seven days of a week. Six is incomplete. Jesus will make them complete. Oh, did I forget to talk about quality and abundance? Jesus provides wine of good quality in abundance. Thoughts of Napa Valley, perhaps. I absolutely love the steward's observation. Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. You have kept the best wine until now. The best is yet to come. The kingdom of God is the best which is yet to come. We have to overcome our tendency to treat this story like a magic trick. Jesus doesn't just save the day, but let's not move too quickly here. He does indeed save the day. It has always fascinated me that God cares for an unnamed couple on their wedding day. With all the problems in the universe, Jesus comes to the rescue of this couple whose names are lost to history. But their story isn't. Can we dare to believe that God cares for us like that? More to the point. When Jesus is around, ordinary water becomes festive wine. When Jesus is around, our limited, frail, fragile lives reveal God's love. When Jesus is around, our sins are forgiven. When Jesus is around, we see the meaning of our lives and all of history to be love incarnate represented by his walk to the cross. When Jesus is around, God appears like on the third day. Sometimes I simply need a reminder that in the midst of all the craziness in the world, that God cares about me, that God cares about us. In all the universe, God cares personally and intimately about us. I invite you to join me in professing our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Boy, there's a bunch of things to pray about. For our worn and weary world, that we will all have an experience of how much God loves us completely, each of us. St. Augustine said, God loves all of us as though it was each of us. Let us feel God's love in this time. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for those who are fighting COVID, for the researchers, for those who are treating COVID, doctors and nurses and medical personnel, first responders. Let's pray for those who have been infected, those in the hospital. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In this month that commemorates new life, we give praise and thanks for new life. I want to mention Owen Thomas, who was born just a few days ago. 
for all those carrying new life, for those who so long to carry new life, for those who are thinking about ending life, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those on the fringe. We pray for the poor, the needy, the oppressed, and the homeless, the unemployed, the uninsured. We pray for immigrants. We pray for those who live um, near violence or the threat of violence. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Every now and then I will tell people I'm going to pray for you. And just before I came to Mass this evening, I had an interaction with a couple of people online. They were very helpful, so I want to mention Cherish, and I want to mention Taylor. During the day sometime, you'll pray for people. At the end of the day, mention their names and lift them to God. For all those who have asked us for prayers, for those for whom we've promised prayer, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our benefactors, living and deceased, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We always remember the sick. Bridget Albert, Cheryl Allen, Philomena Ahrens, Chris Becker, Mike Berger, Linda Bland, Rick Brock, Karen Burns, Matthew Camp, Arlene Cavallone, Gregory Chentnick, Joan Dagnus, Mary Claire Dano, Kelly Muir Davis, Therese Del Genio, Dave Dempsey, Don Duffy, John Egan, Mark Erickson, Brian Frank, Rose George, Mary Grady, Nikki Houlihan, Connor Jennings, Deacon Bob Kaminsky, Kathy Kinnish, Noreen Lionhood, Jen Lubinsky, Judy Lukens, Frank Marcoon, Joel Nicolau, Carolyn Paulin, April Persichetti, Sarah Ponder, Rich Pataki, Brian Redakovitz, Eileen Redekin, Juanita Rivera, Patrick Rogers, Fred Rohde, Marianne Sheely, Adal Steffi, Marlene Sturdy, Robert Sullivan, Chuck Tarpe, Mike Venetti, Joel and Rich Wallachek, and Jeannie Williams. For all the sick that you'd like to mention in the quiet of your hearts, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, especially Frank Cavazos, Sergeant Marlene Ritmanik, Doug Steen, Brian Arnold, Judy Reichenberger, Janice DeJulius, and Leiden Rice. For the repose of the souls of those who have died, the consolation of all who grieve, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear us, help us, hold us close to your heart. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread and this wine to offer. Earth has given them, human hands have made them. They will become our spiritual food and our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted by our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Children of God, the Lord is with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. 
God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Spirit to sanctify these gifts and these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is completed that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother of Good Counsel, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, the Martyrs, St. Augustine, St. Rita, St. Monica, St. Thomas of Villanova, St. Nicholas of Tolentine, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With one mind and one heart we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and you say to us, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace to all who pray with us today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. If you haven't done so already, ask the Lord into your heart. Since you are not physically able to receive communion, you may ask for a spiritual communion with Jesus. Just tell him how much you love him. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God indeed bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. You have a blessed day and a blessed week.